Hey guys and welcome to another video. Now today we're going to be redoing a video that was very popular on my channel and still to this day is getting more and more clicks and views and comments and I've been able to help a ton of people with it. We're going to be showing you how to create a dynasty league here on Sleeper. Sleeper is you know not a sponsor or a partner at all with the channel but truthfully I think they're the best platform for fantasy sports. They have basketball, they have football, um, they have League of Legends as well which I'm not familiar with but uh, football and basketball I've had so much fun playing on these and for without a doubt the best dynasty platform there is not a better league out there for dynasty sure and re redraft maybe you don't like sleeper as much as you like ESPN and stuff that's that's cool dynasty there's no competition so what we're gonna be doing here is showing you how to set up a dynasty league with your personal settings show you the options and kind of run through how to be a commissioner of a league or even if you're not a commissioner and you just kind of want to know how the ins and outs work stay ahead and of course before we get into it please be sure to leave a like on the video as it, it truly helps out in more ways than one for a small youtuber like me as well as comment down below if you have any questions i'll be sure to answer them or if anyone else knows the answer to them i'm sure they'll be able to help you out as well subscribe if you are new turn those notifications on and let's get into this so first thing you're gonna see when you create your account on sleeper is you're gonna get to a home page right now for me I have my leagues here so that's why the home page is, is showing what it is um, there's all my leagues my basketball league and such um, but there's a ton of different stuff that you can do here direct messages inbox and everything and this is what we'll see in a little bit but we're gonna create a brand new league here and go through it and let me know if you guys want me to keep this league and start up a new dynasty with you guys I think it'd be kind of fun so let's just make this sample that's just going to be what it's called. We'll make it, um, you're going to title your league name, whatever it may be. We're going to make it a 12-team league. That's pretty much standard. Logo, you can put whatever logo you want. What I like about this compared to leagues like ESPN is ESPN, you have to copy a link from the online. No, here you can upload any image you want. As you see down here, there's a fun picture of me with my friend Josh um, when our friend Jaden actually got a, a replica Game of Thrones sword. So we're making, we're having fun with it, playing with it. Um, and our league photo is all of us cheers in. Um, but yeah, so first thing you're gonna do here is you're gonna go to the, make your team name, select how many teams are gonna be, and don't worry if you're if you aren't sure how many people are gonna be in your league. Set it for how many you know, and then you can change it at any point. If you set it for eight people, and then later on twelve people want to play, you can go ahead and change that, and we'll show you how to do that as well. So we're gonna go to Dynasty here. Um, obviously, you can do redraft or you can do keeper, which is you know redraft with keeper players. Um, Personally, I always just do redraft no matter what if I'm doing that and then I'll I'll figure out the keeper situation But you know keeper is a good situation to have as well and they give you that option But dynasty is is gonna be what we're setting up here um, If you guys aren't familiar with the dynasty league, it's basically where it's a it's a mock NFL is, is kind of how I look at it um, You're gonna have a team and that's going to be your team forever um, You're going to have draft picks for the rookies. You're going to be able to trade um, but that team is your team, so it, it takes a lot of different factors into it: youth, um, health, etc. And there's a lot more, um, a lot more players to be taken. So, draft type for the original startup draft, it is going to be a snake draft. After that, when we do the rookie drafts, we are going to be doing linear because that's going to make it to where the first overall pick is going to be the first overall pick for every round because that's, that's how it is for rookies. But always do snake draft um, unless you want to do auction. Auction's cool, um, but snake draft, I think, is the best for Dynasty. So we're going to go ahead and set it up here. Bam. This is going to be your first screen you're going to see. Now, here is the link. You can get a, go ahead and click that to copy it, and it'll tell you copy the invite link, or you can click copy here. Either one works. Um, it'll tell you how many people have signed up. You can also, you can also show here. Your draft time is not set, and we'll, you'll be able to set a time, as well as do mock drafts with the settings in your league. So the first thing you're going to want to do as commissioner here, when you see the screen, you're going to want to go to the settings, right? Because that's the first thing we want to do. Here we have our sample league um, logo. Again, we could put something there. 12 teams is how we have it. Waiver type. There's a bunch of different things that you can do. For me, in Dynasty, I always have it at fab bidding, and I'll show you and explain that um, what it is. But rolling waivers and standings can just kind of be iffy. Um, especially for dynasty so fab bidding is just the most fair way and most realistic um, and what it's going to do is create a budget where you have to spend money on free agents um, so let's say you know I'm trying to think of somebody Naeem Hines is a free agent you really want Naeem Hines well you're going to go ahead and put some money down on him so let's say the, the it's a hundred dollars for per person you might go put down five dollars on him but if somebody puts six dollars on him you're not going to get Hines and you're not going to be able to see how much people put on that player so you could put down all hundred of your dollars on a player and no one else puts a bid and then you could have put in one dollar and gotten it but now you spent your hundred so it makes it very competitive it makes it um, fair because it's all based on what you're willing to give up 
So personally, I usually have it at 200, um, but leagues do it at 100. It's really just preference. Um, I like the bigger the bigger amounts just because I think it's more fun. You can go up to a thousand or whatever it may be, because um, you know if if it's at 100, a, a guy you're going to spend five dollars on. When it's at 200, you might spend ten dollars on him. So that's really what it's going to be. Um, waivers clear. What I always do is no waivers. Um, because I like it to be where bidding is bidding is going to be the um, the way to go. So I'll always do custom daily waivers, right? Um, because it's one of those things where I, I want I want players to go right into free agency. I don't want people to be able to pick them up for free or anything. I, I want it to be a, 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 a set thing. You know, I, I just like it to be that. So what you can do here is you can customize waivers to say, hey, the processing time is going to be 2 a.m., right, Pacific Standard Time. So that means that 2 a.m. is when the waivers are going to go through. You can make it midnight. You can make it whatever time. Um, so there's there's different days where you can do things. So what I usually do, and again, these are all customizable to your you know, your perspective of how you want to run it. For me, I always talk with my, my group, especially when you know the people. It's nice to talk to them and figure out what's the best scenario, what everyone likes. Um, but what I usually do is I have Sunday as a free agent pickup because there's sometimes, um, late, late grabs. But other than that, it's going to be waivers. It's going to be waivers every single day. Um, there, there are some days that I'll have waivers turned off or locked in, um, where you can't put in bids, but that that's rare. Um, but yeah, that's, you know, having waivers pretty much every day is the right way to go. You can change it up. Um, like I said, you can make it free agent so that way people can be picked up on Thursdays or whatever it may be. But waivers is the best way to go um, because the rosters are so deep. You should always have people to play. So time to review pending trades. Now, I always put this at none. How I view it is if somebody is willing to make a trade, that's how it, that's how it is. They were willing to make that trade. In our league, in my my personal league, where it's friends and family, uh, we have it to where it's it's none. But if it is something that is outrageous, it can be brought to the league chat, and we can vote on if there's a veto that's going to happen. But other than that, I just think you know, unless you don't know anybody in the league, which is kind of hard for Dynasty, I think you should know that you have to like Dynasty is a very, um, it's a very grueling process of you know, it's it's not where you can go log in once a once a week, set your lineup, and be good. Like it's definitely more than that. So you don't want to play with people who aren't really going to be about it and, and really checking this. So time to review pending trades. I always put it at none. And then if there is something that's drastically bad, you know, allow it to be vetoed by the league if someone wants to bring it to a vote. If you aren't confident in that, of course, you can change it to anything. I wouldn't go anything past a day just because I, I think that that's just not fair to have someone sitting there for three days waiting to see if their trade actually went through. Um, I think it just should go through right away. So that's why I have none. Um, trade deadline, I always make it the week um, before the playoffs um, just because I, I think that's the most fair. Um, so depending on your league and how many people you want in there is how you should set this up. So my personal favorite, again, this is all customizable. I'm just showing you my personal favorites, but you are able to go through these settings. So 12-team league, I like having six teams. Half the league gets in. I like having a two-week championship round. It just makes it to where it's a little bit more competitive in the championship and that's just kind of my thing. So for that, that means week 14 is going to be one round. That means the top two seeds will have a bye. That'll be another round right there, the AFC Championship. And then week 16 and 17 will be the um, – or no, week 13, sorry. Week – because there's – no, there's a week 18, right? Yeah, yeah. No, we're we're, right. we're the first time because there's week 18 now. Um, so that means week 16 and 17 are going to be the championship round, right, which is awesome because then that's right before week 18 when really some guys aren't playing as much. But – you know, one week, one week, and then a two-week playoff championship. I just think that it's most competitive um, and intense as well. So, yeah, playoff seeding rules. I always do reseed. Um, default is just, you know, brackets stay where they are. This is basically the highest seed plays the lowest seed every single round. Um, I like that the most, personally. You can change it to either one. We're just going to keep it default for now, but you can change it to either one. That's my favorite um, just because it, I think it balances it a little bit better. Um, and that's kind of what we see in the the real world. Um, you know, the lowest seed plays the highest seed on their side. So, yeah, that's pretty much what we're doing with the playoffs. Because the playoffs start week 14, I usually would go ahead and make it week 13 or week 12 is the deadline. We'll make it week 12 um, so you can't be making, you know, crazy deals right before the playoffs. Consolation bracket or toilet bowl. This is always the 
um, this is always the hardest one. So I, I, I think what I like to do is consolation bracket because it's just more fun. It makes it competitive to see like who's the best. Um, but yeah, either one toilet bowl works because it works like an NFL thing. You know, if you're the loser every, if you're the loser every time, um, you're gonna, you're gonna have the best pick and stuff, or you can change it too. You know, you can customize draft order. We'll show you how to do that. So you can have it to where, Hey, if you win the constellation bracket, then you have the first pick, you know, if you lose it all, then you don't. So, you know, there's different ways to do it. Toilet bowl is just fun. Um, king crap right there like it's just kind of funny to see but injured reserve slots this is huge here because of covid i always have this at, at least two right um because there are players that are going to miss time you can up it to as many as you like right i always have it at least two but you know three is a good spot too what i usually have is i allow players with covid i allow players that are out i allow um holdout players and doubtful players right because a lot of times a player will be doubtful all week even though we know he's not going to play and then you can't get him in again this is all subjective you can make it to where you only want players that are out um or with covid on there you can make it to where you want everybody that can be there so that's this is my usual setup again this is all customizable to your um, preferences but three injured reserve slots because there's going to be a lot of players on this team and of course we know it's dynasty there's draft pick trading um prevent bench players from being dropped after a game starts i usually say yes um because if a game starts and they're on your bench like that's that's your thing um and then this is always a cool tool as well because you can lock all free agent waiver moves just by clicking this button so where like in the off season instead of having to go through and, and click go through all these settings and click through make sure your waivers aren't you can just go down here and just just click what you want right here lock it all so that way no one's making moves during the off season until it's time to make those moves so because this is a 12 team uh, league, usually I'll do f about three or four rounds um, for the for the draft. I'll do four rounds here. Um, if you're doing IDP, which we're not gonna, we'll talk about a little bit. We're not gonna do for this one. I'd make it another round at least because of those defensive players coming in. Taxi squad slots. Now this is one of the interesting things, and also it might be confusing. So basically, a taxi squad is a red shirt, right? In college, if there's a player who is on the team but they're not going to play him this year. They redshirt him so that way he has an extra year of eligibility. That's what Taxi Squad is, um, except without the extra year of eligibility. So what you're basically doing is you're locking in a player that's not going to play for you at all this season, but he's going to stay on your roster. Now, the way I do it is I allow non-rookies um, to be on a taxi year, but only one year of experience, right? So if, if they are a rookie or a sophomore, you can put them in. So guys... I'm trying to think of uh, like Terrace Marshall. Maybe you want Terrace Marshall to be in your taxi squad this year. That's that's cool with me because he's only a second year player. Once you get here, four years of experience, like that's pretty much too far. Two years is the farthest I'll ever push it. But again, one year or um, yeah, one or two years is really what it is. That's that's kind of where I'm at. Um, taxi squad deadline. I always do at the start of the regular season. If you want to move people around beforehand, that's cool with me um, because hey, I mean it's. Your, it's your taxi squad the season hasn't started yet you kind of move it so yeah it's just a red shirt settings but right here we've done all of the league general settings that's cool and we're going to go ahead over to team settings now team settings is just for you so obviously you know a lot of people get confused on where their team is going to be you can have your own team name avatar whatever it may be going over to roster settings this is important for dynasty there's two ways you can do this two quarterbacks or one quarterback one super flex I like I like two quarterback more because it really does put an emphasis on quarterbacks. So that's what we're going to do because you need to have two quarterbacks. With the the super flex and one quarterback, although it's fun, you don't need to have that second quarterback, which some people like more, some people like less. I personally like the two quarterback situation because it really, you know, 12 teams, there's, you know, 32 teams in the NFL. Um, you know, 12 times 2 is 24. Everyone gets another guy. You know, another 12, that's pretty much it. So everybody's going to have at least two quarterbacks, if not three, most likely. So, you know, and then there's backups and such as well. So, yeah, I like the two quarterback situation. I always do two running backs. I usually do three wide receivers, uh, one tight end, and two flex. That's usually my setup here. Um, some people like the two wide receiver. I like three wide receiver. I, I like to see some points go on the board. Here for kicker and defense, take them off. They, you don't need them. Um, so this is where it gets interesting. I like having... Uh, IDPs, you know, flexes for IDPs and, and such as well. 
um, you know, defensive lineman, linebacker, DB. Our main league, this one right here, is actually an IDP league, but the rest of them aren't. But in reality, for Dynasty, all you're doing is basically offense. You're going to have some flex players, tight ends, receivers, running backs, quarterbacks. Um, and then bench slots. This is very subjective as well. I would recommend at least 15. At least 15. But we're going to go ahead and go to 20, um, which makes it to where you have 20, you know, and 10 more. So it's going to be 30, 30 players on each team. It's a pretty good roster for Dynasty, especially when there's no defensive players and such. So 30 is a good spot. So, again, two quarterbacks, two running backs, three receivers, one tight end, two flexes, and 20 bench slots. So we're going ahead with that. Now, this is important here. These are all subjective as well, scoring settings. I'm going to show you what I personally do for mine, and you can go ahead and do whatever you like for yours. But passing yards. One for every 25 is always standard. I always like to have six points per touchdown for a quarterback because when they throw the ball into the end zone, it counts as six points in the game. Why am I going to take that away from them? Two-point conversions, two points. An interception, minus one or minus two. Um, because I do the six points, I usually do minus two for an interception um, because it's for the simple fact where it's, um, you know, you're getting more points for every touchdown. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to dock you a little bit more for every interception. Um, you can add these extras, you know, oh, he, he threw a pick six, so that's minus three, minus two and a half. What I like to do, and talk to your league about this, because this is very, again, subjective. I like to add bonuses, because it's just kind of fun, where if they throw a 50-yard touchdown pass, I want them to get a little bonus. So I usually give them an extra point, and if they throw a 40-yard touchdown pass, I usually do half a point. Again, it's just a little small bonus for cool plays. Um, I'm a very high-scoring, loving player, so if you like high-scoring, these are good settings. But again, you don't have to do any of these. You can keep them at zero. You can change any of these settings as much as you want. I just want to show you what I do. Rushing-wise, 10 yards, yep. Rushing touchdown, yep. Two-point conversion, two points, yep. Rushing attempts, um, it's turned off right now, but I don't really know why that's even a thing. So I, that's just, I don't know if I'd change that. Yeah, but that should be fine. Same thing here, 40-yard um, touchdown. I'll, because it's uh, because it's not a quarterback, I'll usually do one in 1.5 um, because, you know, quarterbacks can throw those deep balls pretty easier. Um, for running backs to do this, it's a little bit harder. Receiving-wise, same thing. Reception, you know, how many points per reception do you want? Uh, the average is 0.5, right? Half point uh, res per reception. So for every two catches, you get one point. Um, again, if you want it to be the most high scoring, make it one point. Uh, it'll, it'll be the most fun. Um, Oh, I went negative one. Make it the, it'll be the most fun to do one. Receiving yards, yep, 10. Receiving touchdown, yep, two-point conversion, two. Again, those bonuses are fun, right? So I usually will do the same thing for the receivers as I did for the running backs, one and 1.5, um, just because I think it's a little bit fun to do that. Now, reception bonus. This is very important here. What I always do in every single league is, is tight ends get a 0.5 reception bonus, which means in this league, every reception is worth one point. So a running back, a receiver, a quarterback, no matter who catches the ball, they will get one point for catching the ball and then have many yards. Receiver catches a 10-yard pass, they get, they get one point for the 10 yards, and they get one point for the catch as a two-point play. For tight ends, tight ends are not as valuable, and they are not as good. You know, Kyle Pitts is one of the best tight ends in football this year, averaged about four catches per game. That's pretty bad. You know, think about that. You're only getting, he, he has four catches for 60 yards. That's a 10 point game from Kyle Pitts, and he was one of the best in football. So that little tiny bump goes from four points to five and a half points, or no, it goes from four to six. Um, four to six points, and then his, his 60 yards. Now it's a 12 point game. It's a little bit better. So 0.5 uh, tight end premium is what everyone calls it. It's usually the way to go. Again, we don't have any kicking or team defense. If you do, you know, mess with those settings as much as you want. I usually only have, um, I usually make it to where it's zero, it's zero points for a miss um, because field goals get blocked and such. But if you miss a point after try, you are going to lose some points. Um, and then team defense, if you guys want to do team defense, cool. Under more, you can have all these other ones. So there's miscellaneous things. So a fumble. Um, usually a fumble is minus one for me no matter what. Um, it, it doesn't matter if you lost it or you got it back for me. Um Bonuses, yeah, if you want to add bonuses, they're usually pretty cool to do. So if somebody gets a 200-yard rushing game, I usually give them three extra points. Somebody has a 400-yard passing game, I'll give them three extra points. Uh, 200 combined rushing and receiving yards, I'll give them an extra two points. Um, yeah, that's pretty much as far as I'll go. The other ones are kind of like, eh, not as, not as important to me. Um, and then last thing is IDP. Again, if you want to do IDPs, there's a ton of settings here that you can play around with. Um, 
But what I will say for all you IDP fans out there, if you are going to have IDP, do not put points under tackle. Only do it for solo and assisted tackle, right? So if, instead of putting, hey, every tackle you get a point, change it to, hey, every assisted tackle, where is it at? We just had it. Every assisted tackle, you'll get half a point. And every solo tackle, you'll get a point. Or you can do one point for assisted tackle too. But make sure you do assisted and solo because that separates the two. If you're just doing tackle, it'll be less. So all of our settings are now liked by us. We're going to go ahead and save that. Make sure you hit the save button anytime you see it down here. There's sometimes it's going to auto save like we've seen before. There's times it's not. So we're going to go ahead and save that here. Now, draft settings. Always, you know, it's you're able to to pick your time zone, you know, but on this one, it's relative to what my time zone is. So, hey, 7.30 on whatever date, right? Pops up the calendar, you pick your date. We're going to draft here at 7.30 o'clock. Cool. Snake draft, yep. Time per pick. This is important. Talk to your league. If your league is all down to draft at the same time on the same night, perfect. Make it a two-minute time timer. If they are not, this is what you're going to want to do. At least four hours per pick. It's going to be a slow draft. So the draft's going to start on March 2nd, right? Everyone's going to have four hours per pick. As a commissioner, I think it's important that if you are doing four hours per pick, there's 24 hours in the day. Usually I'll take eight hours out because of, of, of sleep time is what we'll call it. So, you know, you'll get four picks per day, basically, on the draft. So it's going to be a very slow draft. It's going to take a long time. But it gives players, you know, the ability to – you know, go to work, go to sleep, eat, whatever you need to do. It doesn't need to be locked down because dynasty drafts are long and grueling and it takes a lot of research to, to get through. So, yeah, four hours per pick. And usually I'll say, hey, from this time to this time, you know, from midnight to 8 a.m., you know, my local time zone, Pacific Standard Time, that's when the, the draft's going to be paused. So no one has to worry about it. But at 8.01, it's going to be started up again. Um, CPU auto pick when, when users are out of time, completely up to you. I always have it on. Um, but you can turn it off if you don't want auto picks at all. And then draft order. You can click randomize and it'll put wherever. Look, we got the fourth pick. Or you can manually, um, when all the members are there, you can manually set them. So a lot of times I will do um, offline, you know, spin the wheel or something as a draft lottery. Um, and then I'll set it there. So you can do either or. So you just, you know, click, oh, pick one. You click who it's going to be. Bam, you have pick one. Um, here, keepers and dynasty players, you can set them onto the board beforehand. So if you are doing keepers and such, you can click that. Um, obviously, we're not doing that. Here, available players to the draft. This is important as well. Talk to your league. If you want to draft the rookies and the veterans, so that means that you want to decide between Chris Godwin, uh, Mike Evans, and Traylon Burks as your pick. Like, that is cool. Do all players. They're already in the, they're already in the drafts. So you can get all the rookies in the drafts right now. If you just want to do it to where it's only players that are in the NFL already, do vets only. And then you can have a separate rookie draft. For startups, it can be a little challenging because you have to decide um, what to do. So the best way for, for, for me, what I've noticed is changing it um, to vets only, changing the roster settings and adding a kicker, right? So if you have a kicker spot, that means kickers are going to be available to pick. Um because of that, you can always just change the settings and take them off. So basically what we do is that anytime a kicker is taken, that's the next pick in the draft. So the first kicker taken is the 101 for the rookie draft. If that same person the next round takes another kicker and no one else has, he now has the 101 and the 102 in the draft. It just kind of makes it to where it's a placeholder for um, rookies, you know, and then they'll, you'll cut the kickers, they'll get the rookies, and you'll set that draft board up when it's time. Um, but for me on startups, I just like having available players. Um, if you want to decide between Traylon Burks and whoever, that's cool with me. Um, third round reversal, completely up to you. Again, it's a, it's, uh, it's, it's a decision for whoever. I like third round reversal, um, for dynasty mostly because it just kind of balances it out a little bit more. Um, cause those guys at the, at the top of the draft are, are going to really reap those benefits. Um, because the, their their first pick is going to be great, but then they have to wait a long time to get to round uh, to get to the end of round two. But then the same thing, it's going to reverse on round three. So um, it, it just kind of makes it out. And another thing, sometimes it's a little bit better alphabetically sorting than ADP. Um, it's completely up to you again, but sometimes it's just better to have it alphabetical, especially with the four years, uh, the four hour draft clock. Because that way you, you can look for players based on their names, do your research outside, um, 
because when you just have ADP, a lot of times players will just be like, oh, I don't know. I'm just going to take this guy because ADP is higher. And while that can be good sometimes, sometimes it can be pretty bad. And if there's ever a something that's bad, yeah, you can reset the entire draft. Big old black and red button here that's very scary looking. But we're going to have it sorted, third round reversal, etc. Again, set your lineups exactly how you want. That is okay. Division settings. I like having divisions because I, I like conferences. So you can name them whatever you want. But do NFC and AFC. It's just the easy thing to do. One of the most fun things that I'll, I'll do, and I'll show you. I mean, these ones are updating. Is I like to make my dynasty leagues have a team name. So let's just do, let's do New York, and let's pick our team name. Let's just let's just do Giants since you know I am a Giants fan, obviously. But I like to have teams where you have a city and a and a team name. Because then you can find logos online that go with that. So if you want to be the New York Panthers, you can look up a Panther logo. It doesn't have to be the Carolina Panther logo. It could be anything. Because um, then in the divisions, you can have NFC and AFC, and it just looks really cool. Again, just a personal preference of mine, something fun that you might want to introduce. You can add pictures to the divisions so that way they know um, which divisions which, and it has a little logo. But, yeah, those are always cool to see as well. Uh, member settings. This is just where you can manage the league members. Um, so you can you know, add people here if you want to invite people to the uh, to the league and you need to assign them a team because when a person joins a league especially when this happens if somebody leaves the dynasty league if somebody is taking over for that team when they join the league it's not just automatically going to place them on that team you're going to have to come in here and you are have to assign them to the team that they are going to be assigned to so um, this is really only going to be used for that sense but it's always good to know co-owner settings if you want to add a co-owner you do that here and you can let them know how much um you know how much responsibility they can have on running the team but that's just for your team commissioner control um this is pretty cool because it's you know it's what it's what you're doing so uh you can always edit lineup scores etc and you can change commissioners and matchups and such um really you should never have to touch these it, it's only used for extremes um but yeah i mean honestly that's that's all the settings that we're going to go through for the for the league um, and I'll go through the what Sleeper looks like and, and such as well here. Uh, but only 30 minutes in. Again, like the video, subscribe if you are new, comment down below if you have any additional questions. I know that I ran through a lot, and I'm hoping that you were able to stick through it all. But if you guys are all done, you just wanted to look at settings, or if you just clicked on the timestamps below to hear what's, uh, what specific part you did, I appreciate you guys for checking it out. But if you want to learn a little bit more about Sleeper, stay on this video. We'll go ahead and run through the league as well. So what I'm going to do here, obviously this is our cool little league here that we have. I'm going to go over to our my main dynasty league here, right? So first thing we're going to, well, first thing that comes up is draft, right? So it says our drafts in 100 days because we don't have a draft set. So one of the cool things is I'm going to open this in a new page. Hopefully I can. Um, no, I can't. So anyway, you can set up mock draft and right here to say it's in the pre-draft. So when you go here for the mock draft into a new tab, this is already set up exactly how it is. So you start to see the draft picks that were traded, and you, obviously you see your boy has been moving picks around. They're already there. The rookies are here as well, ranked to the, the T of where they need to go. So you can run a rookie mock draft with your exact league settings to where I'm like, hey, I know I don't have the 106, um, but I have this pick, I have this pick. Or, you know. So that is awesome to see, and it's, it's a lot of fun to do that. We're going to go ahead and close this out. Um, if you aren't familiar with the mock drafts, maybe I'll do that in a separate video on how to run mock drafts. But here, you know, you have your main page draft. It's going to show you know, NFC, AFC, um, and it also show your league, your league settings, you know, number of teams, bidding, you know, everything is going to be down here. And it shows also, this is one of the coolest things, if you're a member of the league and not a commissioner, they highlight the settings that are not standard in yellow. So it is, in our league, 20 yards, you get a point. Right, so instead of it being 25 yards per point, you get 20 yards per point. For every touchdown, instead of it being four, you get six. 50 yard touchdown bonus, plus two. So anything that's not normal, it'll put in yellow. So you'll know when you set up your league, if you just wanna play with it before inviting friends or inviting anybody, you'll see, hey, that's not something traditional. Is that a setting I like? Okay, I do like that. So there's different ways to do that, but that's all gonna sh to show there. On the right side here, you have the league chat. Um, anytime someone makes a free agent move, changes names, and we'll show you how to do that. Um, it's going to be put here anytime someone puts someone on the trading block. As you see, I put Jamar Chase on the trading block. Um, you're able to do a ton of stuff here. And when the draft order is set, um, it's all here. Updated draft order, etc. Um, pinned messages. What's really cool is if you, if I wanted to, 
I can click these here and click pin. So when I click the pinned message, you can click, instead of it being on the whole league chat, you can click the pin up here and only the pinned messages will show up. So now if I'm just looking for the main things or I really, as a commissioner, I need to, you to see everything here. This is what it is. So I'll show you on, on my other league as well, the pin messages. We have a bunch of questions and polls up for the league to make sure they can um, pay their dues, they can, you know, et cetera. So instead of having to run through this whole chat of figuring out what everyone's doing, you just go over to pin messages and you can vote on your pins as well. But going back to the main Dynasty League, that's the main page. We have our messages. You can look in the draft room, settings, etc. You can go ahead over to team here. So team, you can click your team settings. Same thing. Mine's the New York Brigade. This is our logo. Um, and each player, this is one of the coolest things about uh, Sleeper. You can name every player a nickname. So I have Admiral Dakbar as my leader here, Dak Prescott. Saquaz is Saquon Barkley. I need to update, you know, OBJ. Um, bad joke for Kareem Hunt. Uh, Maniac, you know. So you're able to... to add some fun nicknames which are which are kind of fun to do but yeah you'll see here you know you can move your move your players just kind of like any any other you know any other fantasy format um you'll see those injured reserve slots those taxi slots we have it also shows your draft picks down here so it goes all the way out to 2024 we do we do idp so that's why we're five rounds um but it'll show you hey this is this year's draft we already know the draft order these are your picks um next year these are the picks you have it so it shows every single thing on your roster. Um, you know, and again, IDP for us, we have D-line, linebacker, DB, and IDP um, flex, which is cool. Um, but yeah, so, you know, you can have trades here where you can click the trade button. It's like, hey, I want to trade with Hunter. You can make a three-team trade. I want to trade with him and Gonza. I want to trade with the whole league, whatever it may be. Um, but you can do that. And then once you go there, you're able to decide. And one of the coolest things about the trade, the trade summary over here is let's say I want to get Patrick Mahomes from Hunter, you know, and I want to give him Dak Prescott and Derrick Henry, you know, I don't, that obviously wouldn't go through, but it shows here, Hey, I'm going to be receiving Patrick Mahomes. I'm going to send these guys. Hunter's going to be getting these guys. He's going to be sending him. You also can add in draft picks. So down here, if I want to add in a draft pick to that, it goes through all of it. So, Hey, I'm going to give Hunter his two Oh five back. That makes the trade a little bit better. I'm also going to give him a hundred dollars in free agency budget so now he's getting Patrick Mahomes a hundred dollars to his free agency budget so now he'll have 275 he's gonna get a second round pick back this year he's also gonna get Derek Henry and Dak Prescott now it's starting to look more and more balanced as it goes out um, so yeah that's one of the cooler things to do and then when you click next you can say when it expires so you can say hey by the end of today this trade is gonna be gone so you make your decision um, set those timers as well obviously we're not sending a deal but that's how that looks um, going on to the league, again, it's just going to show the standings, basically, um, show who's in your league. Uh, it also shows activity, who's being cut, who's trading players. Um, the settings are here again, the scoring here again. So just, again, just your basic league settings. Players, this is going to be free agents, right? So you can make it to where there's it's not it's just going to be everybody. So all quarterbacks, um, you know, free agents, quarterbacks, whatever it may be. I don't know why it's it's kind of listed a little weird. Um Oh, I think it's just saying 2021. So let's just do 2020. How about that? Um, yeah, there we go. So you can have it to where, you know, hey, it's everybody. So if you're, you're, you're trying to look at, hey, I need a new quarterback. Who are the best quarterbacks in 2021, right, stat-wise? Um, let's do fantasy points. You go up, hey, you know, oh, this is why it's rushing. Um, fantasy points, cool. Like, oh, this is averages, I think. I don't know what it is. Fantasy point average, whatever it may be. Um are these projections or stats? This seems like it's stats. Why is it weird like this? Oh, this is because of week one. Sorry. That makes sense. That makes sense. Here we go. Fantasy points. So if you're like, hey, I need a new quarterback. Who was the best quarterback last year? Tom Brady. Well, he retired, so let's not have him. Um, Josh Allen. Okay, I want Josh Allen. Then you can click trade, right? And then it pops up right here that you can click to, to go through with a trade, right? So cool. I want Josh Allen. It pulls him up. Um, but that's not needed. You can go over to free agents, obviously, and there's all the guys. If you want to just look at the rookie class, see how they're looking, um, they're all here as well. So all the rookies that you would ever want. If you want to look at Malik Willis, you know, 6'1", 215 out of Liberty. It doesn't show any of his rankings or news or anything, but if you just want to look at the names, kind of research, that's okay as well. But, yeah, that free agent tab is going to be the most important because, again, you can look through every single spot. You can 
do it by each one. Hey, who got targeted the most in the free agency? Tyler Conklin. Okay, maybe I want to pick him up. Hey, what running back in free agency was targeted the most? Okay, Daryl Williams was. So you're able to do that. Um, goes through there. Trending. This is one of the coolest features, especially if you're not a diehard fantasy fan. This is telling you what moves everyone is making. So in the off season, it's a little bit more dry. These numbers are going to be a lot bigger. But it's saying, hey, Ashton Doolin is getting rostered by a thousand over a thousand people in the past like day. So that's a guy you might want to add. You know, right now we don't have free agency open, so you can't. But these are guys that are getting picked up at high rates. Now we're looking at trending down. These are guys that are getting cut. You know, people are getting rid of Roethlisberger, Agumba Wale, uh, McNichols, Collins, etc. So, um, yeah, it just kind of helps you out because then if you're looking, you're like, huh, my the number one guy that's being cut is on my team. Let me look at that. It helps you out with that. Um, you can change it here to quarterbacks and in whatever settings as well trades we've already went through it but if you want to go here to the actual trade screen it does the same exact thing it shows you what trades have been sent or which ones i have going out also you can pull up that same board over here um and then scores is the last tab here just goes through with um you know what uh, what teams they're doing what basically is really all it, all it is so obviously we haven't played the season um so nothing's going to be up here but this is just where it's going to show where it is. One of the coolest things about the league, and let me see, it's going to be far up. I don't know if I can go to it, but the weekly reports, uh, no, it won't let me. Or maybe I can go. So oh, in league settings, previous leagues, you can go here, and we've been in the league for three years. So 2021, let's go to 2021. It's going to pull up. Oh, your trophy winners. Here's the guys who who first place, last place, etc. One of the coolest things about this right here is the recap, and it's pretty long. But this is the weekly recap, right? So the best manager, it says Gonza set the lineup 95% of the of the most perfect lineup he could have set. So he could have only scored 10 more points. Worst manager, biggest blowout was this game. Narrow victory, highest scorer, lowest scorer, all these things. The star of the week, who was the best player at each position each week. It's just a little cool bonus that, that they do um, that really is just one of the most fun things. Um, so you can always go back and look at your past league. If you want to look at what... Um, I'm just noticing what my team name is, so I'm going to switch this off. Um, if you just want to go to whatever you know, whatever year you're in, and you know what you want to, what you want your team to be, you know, whatever it is. Like this is my original team that I drafted. Um, this is in week 16, so let's go to week one. Whatever my team was that, you know, we had one quarterback at the time, which is different. Le'Veon Bell was on my team. I remember I traded for him in the draft. Um, so yeah, a lot has changed in those years, but. It's definitely pretty fun. I had Eno you know, Benjamin in my taxi squad. Good taxi squad guy to have. Picks were there. So you're able to go back and look at your leagues in the past. It's kind of fun to see all that. Um, but, yeah, uh, we can't go to previous leagues now. So we'll just go back over to the Dynasty League. But, yeah, that's pretty much all the settings here. And, again, if you ever want to do mock drafts, you can use your league settings here or you can just go to the mock draft side. But that's it for us, man. If you guys enjoyed this video, please be sure to leave it a like. It, it, you know, It's not necessarily a hard process, but it definitely can get confusing, especially if you don't know what there is. Uh, please, if you have any questions, leave them down in the comment section below. It really does help me out to know that you know you are interested, but you just are, need a little bit more help. I'm always checking the comment section, so please be sure to leave those questions down below. If I don't know the answer, I'll try and point you in the right direction, but most of the time, I'll, I'll know where to get you to. Um, with what your question is so go ahead and leave those in the comment section below but you do know what you have to pass to get there you have to pass the subscribe button and the like button and i'd really appreciate it if you hit both of those because these videos you know they it's taken up a lot of your time it took up a lot of my time as well i'm just hoping that it does help out a ton because my first video is when i first set up my league and as fun as it was um i've learned a lot since then i've gotten a lot better at the game so of course, again, just leave those questions down below all year. doesn't matter if it's the year 2025 and you're stumbling upon this video. I will be checking the comment section below, I promise. So, again, if you did enjoy the video, please be sure to leave it a like. If you didn't, just refresh the page and let me know what you think about it the second time. Leave those questions down below and let me know what you think. And I'll see you guys in the next one.